Good morning, peace be with you, and welcome to this virtual worship service at Montgomery Church on Sunday, July 12th, 2020. Our elder for the month is Jim Ryan, our deacon for the month is Sue Rose. Also, session meets this evening, so if you have any items for session consideration, please get them to Bernie Spicker, our clerk of session, sometime this afternoon. Let us turn our hearts and minds to worship God. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord. More than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is merciful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin as we pray together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, 
word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy, who forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your righteousness we may discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 9 through 18. Listen for God's word to you today. At that time I said to you, you are too heavy a burden for me to carry alone. The Lord your God has increased your numbers so that today you are as numerous as the stars in the sky. May the Lord, the God of your ancestors, increase you a thousand times and bless you as he promised. But how can I bear your problems and burdens and your disputes all by myself? Choose some wise, understanding, and respected men from each of your tribes, and I will set them over you. You answered me, what you propose to do is good. So I took the leading men of your tribes, wise and respected men, and appointed them to have authority over you, as commanders of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens, and as tribal officials. And I charged your judges at that time, hear the disputes between your people and judge fairly, whether the case is between two Israelites or between an Israelite and a foreigner residing among you. Do not show partiality in judging. Hear both small and great alike. Do not be afraid of anyone, for judgment belongs to God. Bring me any case too hard for you, and I will hear it. And at that time, I told you everything you were to do. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. first reading today that Steve just shared with you was from Deuteronomy and it was Moses speaking to the people. Now we're moving forward in time. Our second reading today is from Matthew. And this is the first parable of Jesus that Jesus shared with the people. 
That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you did, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the words and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed following, falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God endures forever. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I'm sitting here with Steve, who's our resident chemical engineer and thinking about my gross incompetencies in life. Science. Science has always been a challenge for me. But I do have one vague recollection from grade school. Crop rotation. Steve's laughing. You can't hear it, but he's chuckling over there. If we were here together, I would ask you to raise your hands if you remember learning about crop rotation in school. But alas, Steve raised his hand just to let you know. But alas, we remain apart. So here's a thumbnail sketch from my memories from grade school. Now, cut me some slack. This was over 50 years ago. Each crop depletes things from the soil, but it replenishes other nutrients in the soil. So this year, 
because of thinking of this and because I was able to expand my garden because we put in a new fence and increase the boundaries inside the fence, I moved my tomato plants and my eggplant. They've been growing faster, thicker stems. They look healthier than they have in years. Well, they did until I realized deer do eat tomato plants and I planted them too close to the fence. So I had these great plants with, you know, stems as big as my index finger. And I got home from visiting my sister and they'd all been chopped off. But that's, you know, off the subject at hand. But I replenish my soil. I fill it with good things. And when I dig into my soil, it's rich and dark and beautiful and it's riddled with worms. I love it. So when I cast my zinnia seeds on the soil, they take root and provide me with beautiful flowers and a rainbow of colors, truly a gift from God. I came home to them after being gone for a week and they were up about that high. They looked gorgeous. No flowers yet, but the plants are great. So you're wondering, what's the point of all this? Well, the reading from today's lectionary from Matthew leaves out the part where Jesus explains to his disciples why he speaks in parables, verses 10 through 17. I've always found that odd in the lectionary that it leaves that part out because I think that's a really important part of all of this. So today I thought it was important and so I included those verses in our service for today. The parable of the sower is well known to us. Seeds need healthy soil to take root and grow. But before we can sow the seed of God's love and the teachings of Jesus, before we can sow those seeds ourselves, they have to take root and grow in us. We have to be the healthy soil before we can sow those seeds. To have the healthy soil we need, we need the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Now, people might disagree with me on this, but I believe those secrets of heaven are what Jesus told the Pharisees are the most important commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. I think we cannot love God with all our heart if we don't love our neighbors. How can we truly love God if we don't love his creation? And once we have that basis in ourselves, that love for God's creation, that love for God, then we're healthy soil. And once we're healthy soil, we can receive the seeds sown by others in our hearts. C.S. Lewis, and you guys have heard me talk about C.S. Lewis forever. You're probably sick of me quoting him and talking about him, but that's okay. Talked about this one day in one of his radio broadcasts. He speaks of people who try to do good for others but somehow their acts get twisted and the results, results aren't so good. I see this today in our schools. Some teachers think it's better to give kids multiplication tables to keep in their folders instead of having kids memorize their multiplication tables. Now the kids I've worked with, the kids I tutor in math, amongst other things, not science, always have that aha moment that day when they get this look on their face, because I've been badgering them for probably a couple of years that they need to learn their multiplication tables, just memorize them, it'll make life easier. And they have this aha moment when they look at me and they say, yeah, I see that now. I had this happen last year with Damon, you guys have met Damon. Um, he was working out this very long math problem, but it was just a series of multiplication 
that you had to add together. So you multiplied this portion, this portion, this portion, and then added it all together. It was not a difficult problem. And he knew he could do it, but he hadn't memorized his multiplication tables. And he got the look on his face, and I said, you just figured it out, didn't you? And he goes, yeah, I did. I said, okay, so are you willing to work with me over the summer memorizing your multiplication tables? And if you do that in payment, I will take you to the next Star Wars movie when it comes out, because he's a Star Wars fan, big time. And he did, he said, okay. And so we worked all last summer on him memorizing his multiplication tables. And man, was math easy for him this year. He didn't need my help at all. He just did his math because he had memorized his multiplication tables. The teachers have good intentions. The results aren't good. Lewis believes we have to go deeper to do what is truly good. He said, but I do mean that the real cure lies deeper, far deeper. Out of ourself and into Christ, we must go. When we go into Christ, we begin to see ourselves as children of God, that Christ is in us. No other identifier is as important as being a child of God. If we see ourselves this way, we will see all others as children of God. If we truly believe we are God's creation, then we have to believe that every other person on the planet is created by God. This will necessarily change everything about us. Seeing others as children of God is not the work of the moment, just like creating healthy soil takes time. But as we read in this morning's Psalm, I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word, I put my hope. Yes, while we wait, we will have moments of relapse when we don't act with grace. Today, we're lucky. Sometimes our lapses of grace are hidden from others by our masks. I had an experience like that at Lowe's earlier this spring where I was standing in a line and these people took 30 minutes to check out. People had come in, checked out, gotten their stuff, checked out, and left the store while I was in line behind these people. I did not act with grace. I hate to admit it, but it's so. But nobody was aware of that because there was a mask over my face. They couldn't see my lack of grace. As we mature as children of God, our lapses will become fewer and less impactful on others. We become as God really intended us to be, able to fulfill his plan for us. Also, according to Lewis from the same recording, he says, our real selves are, so to speak, all waiting for us in him. What I call myself now is hardly a person at all. It's mainly a meeting place for various natural forces, desires, and fears, etc., some of which come from my ancestors and some from my education, some, perhaps, from devils. The self you were really intended to be is something that lives not from nature, but from God. When we allow ourselves to be children of God, we will become the self God intends us to be we will be able to fulfill God's plan for us. Eventually, the seeds others sow will fall on our good soil and grow in abundance. And we can harvest that seed and cast it into the world with the hope and expectation that some of the seed we cast will also land on healthy soil. You might remember that we called our capital campaign in 2015, Sowing Seeds. In addition to improving our facilities, we had the hope of improving our sense of community. We had the hope that improving our facilities would bring more people into our church. Although it hasn't affected our membership, our improvements have encouraged Skyward to add enrollment and have brought the Greater Cincinnati G Japanese worship community to gather in our sanctuary. We have brought more people into our church. 
We cannot be discouraged when the seeds we cast land on rocky soil filled with thistle. Jesus told us to expect this, but sometimes we will experience the joy of our seed landing on good soil, knowing that we share the joy of God's love with God's children. My mom had a daily devotional on her counter, and I have that sitting on my desk now. It's one of those timeless ones that just has the day, so like July 8th or whatever day. Um, so you don't have to get a new one every year. You can just flip it over and start over. And as I wrote this message for today, I flipped the page and read the following. Praying you'll know the fullness of God's joy in your day, the closeness of his heart to your need, and the goodness of his plan for your life. Healthy soil allows us to experience God's joy in our days, tells us God understands our needs, and that his plan for our lives is good. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith taken from a brief statement of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor, teaching by word and deed calling all to repent and believe the gospel. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally good in God's image. God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life, in a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Savior, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ and to live holy and joyful lives. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me for the prayers for the people. God of all creation, Hear us as we pray for all you create. You have created us in your image. Let us remember this in love. You tell us to love one another. Let us love neighbor as friend and enemy as neighbor. Remind us to speak kindly as the thoughts of our hearts become the words of our mouths. We pray that those who thirst receive the water of life. We pray that those who hunger receive the bread of heaven. We pray that those who are burdened find rest in the gentleness of Christ. We pray that those who are anxious find peace that comes with reliance on God. We pray that those who despair find the joy that comes from life in God. With confidence that you hear our prayers, we offer ourselves to you. Here I am, Lord. And now with the words Jesus taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Go in peace today. Loving God, you want us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing except losing you, and to lay all our cares on you, knowing that you care for us. Protect us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, and grant that no clouds in this mortal life may hide from us the light of your immortal love, shown to us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.